You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. In this video, I'm going to be telling you everything I know about cruiser design. Cruisers, when you research them, are the most powerful ship at your disposal. And for a while, they represent the best that your fleet will have to offer. I'm going to be showing you my designs, explaining why they work and what is effective about them. If you enjoy this video, please interdict that like button. This is the first design I'm going to show you. I'm calling this the M Picket design. Now, M for medium and picket for the combat computer. The main purpose of this design is that it is an anti-corvette cruiser. This thing is going to chew through corvettes, be they missile or gunboat, with absolute ease. In terms of the technology, you're going to be getting cruisers somewhere between year 40 and year 60. I've gone for around tier 4 technologies, I think that's pretty reasonable here. Of course, as ever, a good balance between kinetic and energy weapons so that we've got both anti-armor and anti-shield damage. If you've got plasma cannons, if you've got plasma accelerators, put them on your ships, put them on your cruisers. Cruisers with plasma accelerators are really, really good. Also, here with this design, I recommend you do swap out into a gunship stern so that you can grab a couple of auto cannons on there. They're going to have really high accuracy and tracking to help negate the evasion of corvettes. In addition to that, we've got the picket combat computer. Now, if you're building cruisers to fight corvettes or destroyers, I would absolutely recommend Build, put, put building them with a picket combat computer just so that you can negate any tracking, any evasion bonus that the enemy ships have with your tracking. Of course, as the accuracy of my weapons is not at 100%, it makes good sense to add auxiliary fire controls. That's going to give me an extra plus 10 to my accuracy for both of these together. In terms of defenses, I've gone for a balance between shields and crystal plating. If you haven't got crystal plating, you can put armor in, although armor is very high cost. It's twice the cost of shields, and it, generally speaking, is not economical to actually place on your ships. If you can get crystal plating, that's a much better defense. Of course, you want to fill up your ship with as much shields as your power limit will allow. This ship is going to have a really good time, as I said, against any type of corvettes. But against missile corvettes specifically, there is one little tweak you could make that would improve the design. Here is a carrier cruiser. Now this cruiser, I've swapped out the medium slots and the small slots for a large and a medium weapon. And then I've also got a hangar core in the center of the ship. Now this hangar core is going to let me have strike craft. They are really, really good at negating the evasion of corvettes. They're also fantastic at taking down enemy missiles. So this ship type will perform slightly better than the M picket design I showed you just before against missile corvettes, although it will perform quite a bit worse against gunboat corvettes. That being corvettes with no missiles, just small slot weapons. Now, while this design is going to be good against corvettes, it is going to suffer when it comes up against destroyers. So, what can we do to change that? Well, we can replace the hangar core with an artillery core. Now we've got an extra large and medium slot. That is going to be really useful. I'm going to equip those with uh, some kinetic. So I've again got a good balance between energy and kinetic weapons on my ships, just because you don't know exactly what your opponent's going to face. And I'm going to assume here that you're playing an AI or playing a player and you don't quite know what defenses they have. Now, this ship is going to have a phenomenal damage output. Those two large slots are going to be really, really powerful with high range. This is going to absolutely decimate destroyers that you come up against, though it is going to suffer when coming up against corvettes. Uh, in the testing I have done, this design will force corvettes to retreat. It will push back corvette swarms. However, it will lose many, many casualties and lose more casualties than those corvettes themselves have taken. So I really wouldn't recommend using this artillery design against those corvettes. 
Now, the reason that these large weapons are so powerful and so useful when fighting against destroyers is that they're going to fire in a single shot a large burst of damage. One of the main things destroyers have going for them is they have a very high disengagement chance. Their chance to disengage has a 50% modifier included. So in order to destroy dis destroyers, you need to make sure that you are dealing high damage in single bursts. The same is incidentally also true of other cruisers as well because they also have a high disengage chance. Now, what large weapons do is they have a, a much more powerful uh, individual shot than smaller or medium weapons. They tra the trade-off here, though, is that they have very, very low tracking. As you can see, only 5%. But of course, with our combat computer and our sensors, we can mitigate that when shooting against destroyers and against cruisers and battleships it's simply irrelevant the evasion of cruisers and battleships is far too low to worry about needing any tracking one thing to note here i have of course gone with the picket combat computer but if you're going to come up against other cruisers i would recommend swapping out this picket combat computer for an artillery combat computer this artillery combat computer is going to give you more weapons range, which will give you an initial alpha strike before your opponent's alpha strike, which will be really, really useful and important. Overall, this is the most powerful design of cruiser when facing both destroyers and other cruisers. And on top of that, it's your best bet against battleships if you don't have the battleship technology. That being said, you're not going to win against battleships if they have X-slot weapons. If they don't, if your opponents only just research battleships and they haven't researched any X-slot weapons yet, you may prevail with this ship design. I mean, you're going to have something quite useful, which is a high disengaged chance. Something to note with this crystal plating is that it increases your ship's hull points, which will increase the chance of your ship disengaging from combat and surviving a combat engagement. That is going to mean that these cruisers can be nigh unkillable to enemy fleets of corvettes and destroyers. Yes, they may force you to retreat, but you're not going to take that many losses if you can maximize your disengaged chance. That being with a trickster admiral and also the specific doctrine, the war doctrine, hit and run. What would a late game cruiser look like? Well, all I've done here is I've replaced my large slot weapons with neutron launchers. They're the best large slot weapon in the game. And then I've also thrown in the kinetic to balance out the fact that we haven't got any anti-shield weaponry here. This design is going to do fine against destroyers. It is going to struggle against late game corvettes and it is going to be decimated by late game artillery battleships. Although it may, uh, it may actually have a good shot against carrier battleships, again, if they don't have an X slot weapon. The great tragedy with cruisers is that when they appear on the battlefield, they are the best weapon at your disposal. However, as soon as battleships come onto the horizon, their role is completely supplanted by battleships. And battleships will then end up doing it better. Anything pretty much that you can do with a cruiser, you can do better with a battleship. But what about building an effective destroyer design? If you want to know more about that, click the video on screen now.